everybody. Today we're going to be demonstrating a quick augmented reality application that we built in the lab. So in front of me here is a 3D printed patient specific heart from the blood pool segmentation. So as you can see, all the different chambers are there and are present. And the whole heart can actually be taken apart and then put back together again. Um, it's really just used to teach anatomy and give people a sense of uh, what the different chambers uh, look like and how they interact with each other. Uh, we're currently in Unity 5.6, running Euphoria's SDK. And what makes this different, as you can see from the callouts that just came up, um, is that we're using our 3D printed organs as the targets themselves. So in previous applications of uh, augmented reality that we've built, uh, we used to use a lot of paper targets, like with different designs on it, to show off different, um, like different digital information overlays uh, on different things. Um, but right now, with Vuforia's uh, still in beta model target generator system, uh, you can now set SDLs and OBJs and other 3D model CAD files as the target of interest for your augmented reality application. So as you can see here, it's recognized um, this 3D printed heart, and we can interact with it and move it around. I can move the camera around, which is just a, a pretty low-end 720 HD webcam right now. Um, and uh, the different callouts, um, the label of the specific parts uh, come out and are well tracked by the, by the system. So what else can we do with uh, this setup? Uh, well, we can do things like show the myocardium. So like I said earlier, the 3D model itself that's been printed is just a cast of the patient's blood pool. So that means this, this is like showing off what the internal chambers look like and what the actual blood looks like. But with the myocardium that we can toggle on and off, you can actually show people exactly what the full volume of the heart looks like. So this is the musculature that surrounds it, essentially. Uh, from here, we can even hide the myocardium and show the digital overlay. So this would be an example of what the CAD model for this particular 3D printed heart looks like. And again, we can interact with it and move it around. So as you can see here, this is especially useful for us because without the overlay, you can see that the aorta is truncated because the full thing takes about 16 hours to print. And once we put the full thing on, it doesn't actually, the heart no longer comes apart. It kind of like locks itself up. Um, but we can kind of go past that by having the digital overlay that we can toggle on and off. And then you can see the full volume of the aorta, including the arch and the descending portion itself. Uh, from here, um, what's really interesting is that we can show off the pathology of the spe uh, specific heart. So just like that. This window pops up showing the aortic dissection that runs across the, um, the aortic arch of this particular model, plus the descending aorta. And we can toggle that on and off. So you can see different views of the model, and that window will actually be tracked by the heart itself, so you can interact with your model, and you can still see where the, the, the dissection is via that picture-in-picture -picture window. So if we hide the pathology, we can then show the myocardium. So this is like the ultimate 3D um, digital overlay on the 3D printed model, and again we can pick the whole thing up and rotate it uh, a, a little bit because you you know you lose tracking after a little a while, but uh, the system picks it up pretty pretty well after it's already found it the first time. So if we set the heart back down, um, we can then do, and then I have to back up a little bit here. We can do a full chest reconstruction. So bam, there are the lungs, and there are the ribs plus the sternum, so the full rib cage. And this is also patient specific, so it was segmented out from a CT scan. So in this way, we can see exactly where the heart is supposed to be and where it's supposed to lie, including the, um, the aorta and all the other corresponding parts um, within the chest cavity and how they fit in relationship to the lungs and oops, the lungs and the rib cage themselves. And again, we can show the pathology, and it still shows us exactly where we're expecting the uh, aortic dissection to be, but this time in relation to the lungs as well as the heart. So let's hide that. Let's deconstruct the chest because we no longer need it in our scene. And we can hide all of our overlays. So that's just a quick demonstration of um, what we can do with our 3D printed models when we combine it with augmented reality. So right now, um, we're still trying to experiment which models do work and don't work for the system. Uh, which poses and what kinds of poses are better recognized by a system and more robust or more routinely recognized as well. 
and uh, we'll be exporting to Android and iOS devices to actually test the system. So this thing really was meant for high-end Android and latest iOS systems because I guess their cameras are much better. Um, and even sometimes uh, this webcam struggles with finding the models themselves and the lighting conditions can, um, can affect how the targets are actually seen and detected. But overall, like the tracking is, the tracking's been pretty good and the majority of the poses are pretty easy to find for the different models as well. So we're going to continue building through this application and seeing what other modules we can add. Um, and really what this is meant to do is give context to uh, the 3D models uh, that we are able to print and uh, distribute around the hospital and to, um, to our students as well. So uh, we look for more of these kinds of applications coming out from our lab uh, very, very shortly. Okay, so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.